What's good, Five Stripe fam? It's Christmas in September. That's right, FIFA 19 has come out and we're here to talk about all of your Atlanta United players, do some reviews, look at the stats, tell you who's gone up, who's gone down. It's FIFA 19 day! I'm AJ, this is Devin. Before we get into it, become a member of the notification squad by hitting the bell next to the subscribe button. It's like your birthday, it's like the holidays, all wrapped into one. That's right, it's time for FIFA 19. And we're here to talk all things Atlanta United, all the stats, all the breakdowns. We're gonna talk about all things for your favorite players, whether it's Joseph Martinez or Miguel Almiron, whether it's some of the new kids like Lagos Kunga or Andrew Carlton making their debut in the game. And we're also here to talk about that beautiful Mercedes-Benz Stadium. And it's finally in the game, Mercedes-Benz Stadium. We're so stoked, because yeah, our beauty, of a stadium, our stadium crown jewel. Oh my God, it's uh, it's just beautiful and it's very realistic. I mean, you you know when you see it, it's really just immaculate, just like it is in real life. I mean, my only gripe is that it's not at seventy thousand uh, full capacity. He's a hundred percent right. The angles <laughs> and the chants are there, but. They're missing about 25,000 of Atlanta's loudest. It, but it showcases our city for the world quite quite nicely. Okay. And uh, let's break down this team because yeah. there's a lot to go into. There really is. So let's get right into it. And first up are our goalkeepers and Brad Guzan. He's at a 73. And just looking at his stats, it's very interesting. And of course, Atlanta United came out with that video and fooled all of the Atlanta United players with irregular stats, but his real stats are here. Yeah, 75 uh, dribbling, it's, yeah, Tito was just, he, he couldn't believe his eyes and yeah, he knew something it better, was right. Better dribbling than <laughs> Tito Villalba. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, I mean, so, you know, him at a 73 diving and 73 kicking. Yeah, Reflexes I mean, at a 75. I think yeah. it's a little bit low for Guzan, uh, but when you look at some of the other goalkeepers, he's right up there, but the top rated overall uh, MLS goalkeeper uh, is Andre Blake from the Philadelphia Union. Mm -hmm. um, and Guzan is, is favorable to that, but Blake is a gold and Guzan is not. Yeah, and you also have Stefan from Columbus Crew in there at a 75, and that's uh, that's fair, I think. I mean, that's a, a guy who's on the up and up and coming, and Brad Guzan is kind of on the, uh, some would say, and I mean, he's in his mid-30s, he's on the decline as a goalkeeper, but still, uh, you know, goalkeepers can age pretty gracefully, and so, uh, you know. We age like wine, whereas strikers age like milk. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, uh, what an analogy, but uh, <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, you know, you also have Alec Cannon there at a 66 and Mitch Hildebrand at a 65. Uh, looking pretty good as our backups, pretty strong in there, but also, you know, if we're having to rely on them uh, for an extended period of time, then it's, uh, you know, in terms of in FIFA, you might be a little worried, but. Well, I can speak from personal <laughs> experience, having started a career with Atlanta United, considering I purchased it early. Yeah. Uh, starting my career, if you're playing with Mitch Hildebrandt, Get ready to score some goals because you're going to concede. Yeah. Nothing against you, Mitch, but 4-2 <laughs> in my first match. Oh, yikes. Let's talk about our top defenders. Of course, number five, the big man from Buenos Aires, Argentina. Mm -hmm. Leandro Your favorite. <laughs> my favorite. The brain fart waiting to happen, Leandro gonzalez Perez. Yeah. They've got him rated as a 75, uh, which I feel is pretty fair. Yeah. Um, he's, a, he's, our, he's our top rated defender. You know, in terms of... Uh, his physicality compared to other center backs around the league and his pace and you know his defending is pretty high up there for an MLS player. I think this is right in line. It, I have really no qualms with uh, with this card. Next up, our next defender is Greg Garza, our left back extraordinaire. And unfortunately, of course, he's injured for most of the season now. But looking at his card, he's a 70 and you know- looking... I got some serious problems with this card. Yeah. I'm... There's... 72 pace, uh, not not what I would consider considering what he does up and down that wing. Um, exactly. It's it, it seems it seems like so, dribbling and, seems a little low. Too, this is something we're going to get into. It seems like they nerfed our our pace. It, it, it's like they don't watch our matches. Uh, you know, <laughs> Joseph's faster than Miggy. I don't I don't think so. Joseph with a, a, a 25 defensive rating. I don't think little, so. Little tease, yeah. But when it comes to something like this, Greg Garza with a 72 pace. Are you kidding me? We'll move on from that one because uh, that one's just going to make us angry. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> the next guy. Of course, is Michael Parker's our captain, and he's also there at a 70. Michael Parker was kind of complaining about his pace uh, in the uh, FIFA rating video Atlanta United put out, but uh, 54 pace. I mean, 
I think it's more about his positioning. You know, it's always been more about that for him. But yeah, I mean, that recovery speed kind of isn't there. So I'm more upset about the 59 passing. Yeah. I mean, well, he's he, he's he pretty precise in, in playing that ball. Atlanta United, of course, playing the ball out of the back, the Unai Emery style, the Tata Martinez style, yeah. uh, playing it out of the back. You know, Michael Parkhurst has, has been great with his feet, and to only get a 59 pass, I just think it's yeah. a little low. Also, 71 defense. Have you have you watched him? Did you watch that match against Columbus last year in the playoffs? If it weren't for him, that match doesn't go to overtime. It's true. So in keeping to the theme with the defense, let's go with a guy who's actually rated as a CDM. Uh, we're going to talk about the Irishman, Chris McCann. They've got him as a 67 and a silver. You know, I, I think these stats look just about right in line with who McCann is as a player. Yeah, you can count on him to pick out a pass, but pace, definitely not his strongest suit. He's not really going to dribble past any players as well, but... You know, if you need him to win a header inside the box, you can probably do that. So, you know, I think this is a red line. You may also want to consider a position change uh, for him because yep. he's listed as a center defensive mid in this team mm -hmm. that has uh, Darlington Nagby, Jeff Lorenowitz, and Eric Rometty mm -hmm. already listed in that center mid area. So you may want to consider an alteration. The next up is Franco Escobar, our right back, uh, right wing back as well, and sometimes right center back. But looking at his stats, um, 65 physicality okay 65 that's is... the one I don't really understand <laughs> it's like again it, it, it runs with that theme that they don't watch a whole lot of Atlanta United and they don't watch a whole lot of MLS maybe. that guy wins every header for us that exactly. guy how many times has he been knocked out by our own goalkeeper you want to talk about <laughs> physicality it's Franco Escobar yeah and it, when you compare that to an LGP with a 78 physicality or a Parkhurst with a 68 I mean let's be real like Franco Escobar is like really getting in the thick of it and getting stuck in more so than uh, Parker's for sure. And that 72 pace compared to, you know, uh, an LGP compared to a Garza, yeah, I mean, uh, it's it's perplexing, but uh, you know, all right. Just we'll, to give uh, you an example, Chris McCann has a 70 physicality rating, and we both know that he and Franco Escobar, if you're talking about those two going up for a ball, I'll take Franco nine times out of 10. Very true, very true. And then, of course, uh, you have our other defenders here as well, and you, you know, it's right in line with uh, what the depth is. So, um, you know, notably, you know, Miles names Robinson. Like, names like Miles Robinson, Ambrose, Zizo. They're all included in the game, and we encourage you to look deep into it. Up next, we're going to cover the midfield for your Atlanta United. First up, Jeff Lorenowitz. He's the elder statesman, but man, is he ever steady. And this 68 card for him, I feel like it's a little low because, I mean, he's just doing, you know, so much for the team. And when he's out of the team, you can totally tell. But, uh, you know, in terms of this card, 49 pace, okay, all right, okay, I get it. That's the truth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, passing 60, come on now. That's Let's, a little low. Yeah. Uh, you know, 62 dribbling, okay, 66 defense, I mean, okay, all right. 72 physicality is right in there. He likes yeah. to get stuck in. Mm -hmm. Mr. One More Year, Mr. Uh, will he be back next season? We don't really know, but as far as this card goes, the 49 pace, like he said, Right in line, a uh, little bit disrespectful. Next up, we have Eric Rometty, and you know he's the new boy. But some of these stats, I have a problem with already because you can already tell that this is, uh, you know, with 58 pace. Come on now, like, no love, no love, man, no like, love. I get it that he just came from Banfield, and that you know maybe they didn't really know him that well, and they haven't really seen too much of his games, but. Um, the yeah. 63 dribbling. Have you seen this guy nutmeg people all uh, over the field? Yeah. I mean, all over the pitch, Eric Rometty has, has been uh, somewhat of a, of a revelation for us. You know, he came in at a time when when Darlington Nagby had just gone down and, and we were thin and people were quite concerned about slotted right what in. we were going to do next. And he slotted right in like, yeah. like you know, like, like it was like it was nothing to him. But 71 physicality, I mean, you know, he has the nickname of Thick Fielder. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's right in line. Although he is like, what, 5'6", so. That being know, said, go. they do, FIFA does do updates throughout the year. So uh, I would say the Rometty and also another name that we're going to bring up, somebody like a Julian Gressel would be candidates for a jump or a bump in their ratings. Up next, let's talk about JG, the man himself, Gresselmania. They've got him listed as a right mid, but we all know he's a Swiss Army knife, so you can play him in whatever position you want to. You know, I think this passing is a little low, to be honest. Uh, you know, looking at the rest of the team, okay, maybe it makes sense relatively, but I mean, dude is leading 
our team with 14 assists uh, with Miguel Miron. And at this point, uh, just one assist away from the league leader. So come on now. Definitely one of the best <laughs> crosses in the MLS. Yeah. Joseph will tell you, you know, firsthand what it's like to be on the receiving end of some of those passes from Julian Gressel. But exactly. where they did do the man right and show him some love, yeah. look at that 76 physicality. Yeah. Obviously him playing right back and right wing back. Uh, and, and, and like I said, being a jack of all trades for Atlanta United has paid off. 76 physicality, I think, is right up there. Um, and, and I think that the 70 pace is is a little bit slow. Um, but when you think about it, he's in a team of flyers, so he, he's deceptively fast. Next up is Darlington Nagby, and yeah, he's uh, from last year. His uh, stats have gone down a little bit, which is you know a little shocking because I feel like he's. You know, with a position switch, yes, but he has been a better player, arguably, than uh, than last year. And uh, let's so also talk about it. He went from a gold to a silver. Yeah. That, I, and I know that I know that that may not sound like much, but to a player, you know that that means something, and they talk about that in the locker room. He went from a 75 gold, low gold last season, to a 73. Uh, high silver this season. I wonder if the injury right about the time was factored in. I, I don't know how quickly the uh, the EA Sports team you know mm -hmm. does these these updates to player stats and things like that. But Darlington was out with a major injury uh, right about the time mm -hmm. that they, they were doing these player ratings. So I wonder if that factored in him going from gold to silver. Right, but you know, uh, he, he went from 87 pace last year to 81 now. I mean, I don't know if he's lost that many steps uh, in his game, but that's pretty drastic. Six points is a big drop, and yeah. when you start talking about the difference between 87 and 81, is the difference in getting past that last defender mm -hmm. and uh, or not? Yeah. You know, having having to get around a, a center back. Right. Uh, and 69 yeah. passing. Oh, just, that's just terribly low. I mean, he has games where he pretty much completes at 100% completion uh, and has a huge range of passing, and then especially in the final third, all those stats uh, of you know how many completed passes there, key passes, this is ridiculously low, and I think it's just unfair, to be frank. It's the anti-American uh, bias. Yeah, right, and uh, you know, 80 dribbling, okay, um, I, I could get down with that. Uh, his defense has gone up with 54. I mean, you know, with playing center mid and kind of uh, he's not really a defensive mid. player for us though. Yeah, because he has been actually better this year um, in terms of you know his defensive actions, his uh, you know recoveries, his uh, tackling. Like everything has gone up, and so I think yeah, I mean that's true. You know. But you're letting facts get in the way. This is just, this <laughs> yeah, is right. FIFA. Yeah, right. <laughs> Let's move on to the most expensive signing in MLS history. That's right, the 19-year-old wonder boy from Estudiantes in Argentina, Barco. Yeah, and uh, you know, Ezequiel Barco, S74, actually kind of falls right in line to what I thought they would uh, you know, make his card. But uh, still you know, a young kid. Still a young kid, and you know, looking at these stats, I mean, I think it's just about right, really. I mean, it's uh, in terms of 83 pace, in terms of 67 passing. 79 dribbling, but he's not physical, and yeah. he's not gonna defend for you. Yeah. Because right now, a 48 physicality rating and a 28 defense, right. not gonna get you anything. So if you're using Barco, you're using him for his offense, because other than that, he's, he's, uh, he's dead wood for you defensively. So right. use him on the left mid at your own peril. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I, yeah, like I said. and 66 uh, shooting, it's it's one of those things where, you know, yeah, people have complained about his not pulling the trigger in the box uh, and, you know, his uh, actual goal uh, stats are kind of low uh, as well. And, you know, if you look at his uh, highlight reel, it's not really laden with goals either. And so, yeah, I mean, if you look at this setup, they, lower, the way that they have him listed uh, right now, he is more of a 10 than a left wing mm -hmm. or a left mid to me because oh. the 79 dribbling, the 83 pace, uh, I think that when you look at a 67 pass, that can be improved because as we said, he's only 19 years old. Mm -hmm. Barco is a player that if used correctly in this game can be a monster for you. But like I said, don't put him in a situation where he has to defend or if you're going to play against a team that's running that 3-5-2 system and either gonna have wing backs coming at you it's gonna be tough yeah agreed let's move on to our number 10 our smiling assassin uh, and it's Miguel Miron he's got an 80 card looks pretty good on the surface I mean a bump up from last year of 79 I think in this situation they got it right his 89 pace is is 
to me a little bit low because I think he's the fastest player, you know, in the MLS. But um, we'll get into that later. As he's not even the fastest player on this team, yeah. according to FIFA 19. Right. Yeah, I mean, he is like one of the, uh, or he is the fastest player on LA United with the ball for sure. In my mind, absolutely. Uh, maybe not, you know, as pure speed because I think that goes to another player. But um, yeah, yeah, I mean, and that other player we're going to cover right now as a player who they actually have listed as the wrong country in this team. He recently made the switch to Paraguay with Miguel Amarone. Of course, I'm talking about right mid Hector Tito Vijalba. Um, they have him listed as a 75, one of our gold cards. We have four gold cards in this game, uh, two of them Paraguayans, one Argentinian, and one Venezuelan. Uh, but with Tito Vijalba, you're talking about the fastest player on Atlanta United. His 92 pace is incredible. I have had the, the pleasure of playing uh, with Atlanta United, like I said, in career mode. Uh, Tito is a monster. His pace is insane. His finishing, his first touch finishing is insane. If you get the opportunity to, to pull a rebound shot with Tito Vijalba, take it. Uh, use, use that RB, hit that shot, put it in the upper 90 because his finishing is Wow, it's impeccable. Yeah, no, it's uh, if you want to score one of those sweaty goals, I mean, that's you know, this is the player to yeah. do it because you know, uh, if you just you know, bomb it over the right wing and you know, you want a player that can just chase after that ball, Tito is your man. But uh, yeah, I mean, looking at the rest of his stats, uh, beyond his 92 pace, which is uh, OP. Um, yeah, 76 shooting, you know, I think right in line, um, you know, 65 passing, 79 dribbling, I think. Could also be a little higher because I was gonna say it's a little low and, and, and don't let that fool you because as I said I've played with him personally. He can do step over moves, he can do everything. Use Hector Tito Vijalba, I'm telling you. That is, everybody's gonna, especially in these games, people that know Atlanta United, if you play online, they're gonna wanna cover Miggy, they're gonna wanna cover Joseph. Tito is your hidden weapon, yeah. use him. Yeah, and you know, in terms of uh, in real life, I mean, he's nutmegging a player per game. Yep. Like, if that was a stat, it's like one per game. And a little look into our squad players and all our homegrown players uh, actually are in the game this year. And so we're stoked to play with, of course, an Andrew Carlton, who uh, gets a 64 card, uh, 71 pace. I, I think it makes sense. I mean, he doesn't, look like the fastest player but it's with uh when he's on the ball and dribbling that's where his 71 dribbling looks a little low but uh he's the future of, though i mean yeah. it's a homegrown and then you're talking about other homegrown some other atlanta united two players like lagas kunga with his 72 pace or chris goslin um you know you're talking about these young kids that are the future they're bronze cards now but we look to them next season as uh, as potentially big time uh, bit part players in Atlanta United's main squad. Yeah. Uh, so we'll see how that how that translates moving forward. Um, there's also names you know like Romario Williams and Brandon Vasquez mm -hmm. uh, that feature as strikers. But uh, there seems to be somebody that we haven't talked about just yeah. yet. Yeah. Oh man. Uh, who might that be? Uh, yeah. The uh, 30 goal scorer Joseph Martinez, the hat trick king. The goal scoring king. The guy, the, season. the guy with the hair. Yeah, the guy with the hair. Uh, the Venezuelan viper. I mean, come on. Like, how many other uh, nicknames can you give him? We we can actually go on really, but we probably could. <laughs> but the number one, the number one nickname that we really want to give him at the end of the season is MVP yes. and supporter shield holder and MLS Open Cup champion. So yeah, exactly. But uh, you know, he is our highest rated card in uh, FIFA. And uh, I think rightfully so. I mean, he's had that type of impact this season where, I mean, he's just unplayable. You can't drop him. It's, uh, yeah. it's historic. It's, yeah. it, it's a pace that nobody has, has ever been able to keep up with. Like we said, he's, he's setting records. He's set records all season long. And, and, and the team has overcome the system of only Joseph is scoring here lately because mm -hmm. Joseph's actually had a little bit of a drought when it comes to scoring goals. He was on a one one goal per game average, right. and, and uh, but he's been laying it off to uh, to Miggy, absolutely, and, you know, Tito, and you know, just, seeing them yeah. score, getting go, going into playoffs, seeing Miguel Almiron score, Twice. seeing Tito Villalba score, seeing Julian Gressel score. You know, like I said in, in my interview this past week, you know, there, there's there's a lot to fear about this team because you can't pick any one player. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're going to talk about our one player, and that's Joseph Martinez. Yeah. His 91 pace is electric in this game it's it's insane his his 78 shot I feel is a little bit low it is ridiculously low I have a huge <laughs> bone to pick with this uh, I mean it's 
uh, compared to other players in the rest of the league, I mean, 78 shooting. I mean, this is a guy who is scoring at a goal per game, essentially. Uh, yeah, no, it, it, it needs to be in the 80s, mid 80s at least. Did, did, and so, did they watch the Orlando game? Did, yeah. did, they, did they watch? I, have they watched him at all this season? Did they I watch mean, the finish <laughs> against Columbus, where yeah. you know the, the, the left the, the left footed finish from outside of the box? I yeah. mean, did, did they watch any of these goals? You, you, mm -hmm. just, you just have to wonder. But you know, then you get into other numbers. His 78 dribbling, I think, is right up there. Joseph yeah. doesn't necessarily have to do a lot of dribbling most of the time to score. But he's, he's got able to. He is able to. But he's got Julian Gressel. He's got Miguel Almiron, mm -hmm. um, but the 78, it, it, it works for what he is going yeah. to do in I this mean, game. He rounds the keeper pretty regularly if he's one-on-one. -on -one. Absolutely. I mean, he's, he's got those skills. The 72 physicality, right up there. Now, where you had a bone to pick earlier, yeah. I'm going to have the biggest bone to pick with a 25 defensive rating. We're talking about a 5'7 defender that gets up with, with everybody on corner kicks. He, he's not afraid to put his head in. He's not afraid to clear it. I have, I have, he's the main guy you know, defending those headers in the box. Uh, on those defensive uh, actions, and so you know, I wouldn't give Aaron Robin a 25 on defense, <laughs> and you gave you gave Joseph Martinez a 25 defensive rating. Yeah. Like, so 81 wow. for Joseph Martinez arguably could be higher. Yes. Uh, it could be, you know, I think an 83 at least. It's. Just, I think if yeah. you see him in a FIFA Team of the Week, you might see him as high as an 85, 86. Yeah. Uh, especially if you see one of those rare cards come out with the black. When you compare it to other strikers across the league, you know. Zlatan coming in from Manchester United, and now he's an 85 with LA Galaxy. I mean, uh, number one overall card in, yeah. in in all of MLS. Yeah, I mean, he definitely already gets nerfed when he comes into the league, and so okay. Uh, and then David Villa, 82, um, you know, a little higher than Joseph, and then Jovinko also higher than Joseph uh, just by margins. I mean. I don't know. I don't know. You also got a you also got a guy who who got a point deduction to in Carlos Vela at LAFC. So right. Joseph checked in as the the fifth highest rated uh, MLS card. Uh, our top rated ATL uh, Atlanta United player was of course Joseph Martinez. And when we talked earlier about the top thirty. Uh, we had uh, LGP at 30, uh, Miguel Almiron checked in at number 10, and Joseph Martinez was our highest rated player at number five overall. So guys, that's it. That's the FIFA 19's ratings video. And you know, let us know if your favorite player was too high, too low. Let us know in those comments below. But for Devin, I'm AJ, and remember to subscribe, smash a like, share this video, and we'll see you next time.